what's happening guys uh, Alexander the great Volkanovski you know who it is uh, we just thought we we're talking about obviously the old taker fight yeah, UFC 266 everyone's been asking me about the third round about the fight and what I thought about it and we we're just talking about it so we thought you know what let's get the camera rolling and I'll uh, tell you guys about it and I'll go into depth into depth of uh, of, of my thoughts in the situation, what I felt Ortega was feeling, because you know a lot of people might have missed that. They seen a, a lot happening, and there was a lot of controversy with, with certain things uh, in that third round, especially at the end of it. Uh, so I want to go uh, in depth of of how it sort of went, and then even the the mentality side of things, and you know uh, how I how I sort of thought thought of the whole uh, that whole process while it happened. So uh, you know going into that third round. You know, the fight was going my way. I felt like I was in Ortega's head, and I felt like I, well, not, I could tell he was puzzled. You know, uh, the fight was going exactly how I expected it to. Uh, you know, the, he was struggling to keep up with what I was throwing at him. He was trying to react on certain things, and and he just couldn't grasp exactly what I was doing. And I kept making him pay every time he thought he had a read. I ended up throwing something else at him. So I was already there in his head that way, and it wasn't going, going his way. So the third round starts, and I'm starting to land shots, and, and the same thing sort of happening. And we're probably picking it up by then. And Ortega you know, grabs that, that leg after I threw the kick, which he did a few times, uh, and he did a good job of it. Must have been something he was training for. Grabs a leg and throws a punch and gets me with the punch, and, and obviously having my leg, and I've uh, fell on my ass. I've tried to butt scoot and bump straight up before he could even jump onto me. And he's wrapped up that neck. And uh, I've sort of explained this a couple of times, like how surprisingly, fast and how how quickly he was able to wrap it up see a lot of people's instinct in that situation is probably go to control ground a pound or, or anything like that his instinct is wrap up neck instantly before you know literally as, as my butt touches the ground he's already jumping for that guillotine which not many fighters are like that you know and it just showed but he's good at it it works for him and it's worked plenty of times so i get why he did that he's wrapped onto the neck and it's deep i mean he's wrapped my arm his legs are wrapped up behind my leg, put me in a mounted guillotine, the arms in the perfect position, everything. Textbook, it doesn't get any better than the position he got me in for a guillotine. You know, and again, this isn't just anyone throwing a, uh, a guillotine, this is Ortega, this is his world, this is his move, this is what he's known, he's finished. You know, plenty of guys in the UFC with this fight, and you could imagine how many guys in the gym is finished with this. He knows when it's on, and it was on. He said it himself that, it was on. He calls me Houdini. He doesn't know how we got out of it. So credit to him again to be able to snatch it up that quick. It was, it was incredible. And it uh, took me into a place where, you know, again, I'm a, I'm a calm type of person. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pretty chill here. But you know, I'm losing almost, you know, consciousness. Yeah. So uh, I'm starting to lose a bit of color. Uh, you know, the the lights are dimming. If that makes sense, the lights are dimming. Obviously struggling to breathe, but trying to stay calm. But then once you start seeing the, the dimming of the lights and knowing that there's no blood and oxygen going to my brain, I don't care how tough I am, I don't care how calm I am. You go to sleep, that's it, it's over. I need to do something. And I was in a place where I was, this could be close. What I was doing at the time, you know, I was doing the right things, trying to push his hips up, trying to pull on his arm to make that little bit of space. Uh, trying to, you know, keep out my legs, get my legs out so we didn't have a, uh, his legs wrapped around me so much so I could lift his hips So there was a few techniques I was doing that was correct But it still wasn't working enough where I still felt in danger. So what do I do? Do I give up? Do I Accept defeat? No, that's never that's not my that's not the way I'm gonna go about it never do So I I'm gonna keep doing what wasn't working at the time. I'm gonna keep doing that uh, Especially when I had a moment there was a moment there that was uh, pretty special to me. I, you know, I thought of my family in that darkest time where, where the lights were dimming, I'm like, oh no, this is on tight and I need to do something quick because this belt might not be going back to the family if I don't. Uh, again, refuse to lose, I, I can't do that. You know, I literally thought of my family in that moment. It was a, it was a place where yeah, you don't want to be, but you know, um, you know the, I found strength in, in thinking of the family, thinking of Australia, bringing that belt back home and whatnot. And, I can't do this, I need to at least try and keep doing what I was doing. Again, pulling on that hand, trying to hip, keep, trying to push on the hip, and I finally made that little bit of space. Couldn't breathe at the time, even though I made the space, so I got the blood uh, to the brain, and maybe there was enough oxygen to get to the brain where I won't go to sleep, but I'm struggling to breathe, I'm still struggling to breathe. But, you know, I was calm, I knew that I wouldn't go to sleep, 
so I've got my tin out and uh, there we have it I'm, I'm out of this uh, one of the deepest guillotines I've ever been so you've got to think of it mentally for for a taker things aren't going your way you finally somehow get it to your world where you want it you got me in a position that it's game over you're in your head telling yourself it's game over I somehow get out uh, I get up I'm pissed off I'm like I'm gonna make you pay you know I have to do that because I don't know I'm competitive yeah you got one up on me there you know I've been uh, I've been uh, it's been going my way the whole time and you put me in a position a dangerous position I'm not happy with that so I'm obviously gonna punch your head through the canvas and do my thing and leaning some damage uh, a bit overzealous wraps up a, a triangle again his signature move perfect technique was it as tight as the guillotine maybe not the guillotine really was shutting everything off the guillotine uh, the technique wise the the triangle was there it was on it was tight it was exactly where he he wanted he had the leg he had the good angle he's collapsed me to the side everything he's in the perfect position t city is known for this he's got me there and again i'm like all right i'm okay make that bit of space you know it was a a bit unorthodox, a lot of people got their perfect uh, sort of techniques to get out. This was she, I'm in this position now. Whatever you can to make space. That's that's the, that's your goal right now, make space. And I was able to make the space and, and have uh, that oxygen and blood go to the brain. So it was all good and he must have known, known it wasn't on. He tried to adjust his position, I've come up. And again, a competitive side to me and knowing that he got me in another dangerous position, I'm gonna make you pay. So I get up, again, he's got me in two submissions. So I want you sort of to realize his headspace here. It's not going his way. He gets me in the his go-to moves. He's been training. I guarantee you, fruit camp. The, the coaches say, "You get him here, that's it. Game over." You see him in the in the in the corner going up. Hands are up because they thought it was over. Uh, and a lot of people watching, a lot of you guys would have thought it was over. I get on top and I end up really landing down to the bombs, raining down some uh, big shots. Uh, the red end. The the fight ends. Rounds over. A lot of people thought it was over. He stays on at Ortega. So this is where I'm going to talk about sort of where the controversy is and sort of uh, Ortega's sort of headspace in this situation. What I seen from from being in the octagon and what I visioned while I was there. He thinks it's over. He's tired. He's busted up. He's on the ground. You know, the ref come in to stop it because it was the end of the round. He thinks it's over. He's done. He is pretty much done anyway gets pulled up, which you're not allowed to do, but we won't get into that, he gets pulled up off the, the canvas onto his chair, um, and pretty much being told that that's the end of the round, it's not over. So you've got to remember, in his head, he's accepted defeat. He thought it's over, he's done, mentally, physically. And uh, to be told, no, you're going back in there, that's hard, that's tough. That's a place you don't want to be, and then, you know, you've accepted it. It wasn't going my way, I did this, it still wasn't enough, you're mentally broken, physically broken, and then for, for them to, to, and you think it's over, then they take it away from you and say, no, you're going back in there. It's a hard place to be in and to be able to switch things back on. So he does, he bumps off of, off his chair. When I seen it, I think he's ready to go. The doctor goes, talks to him. And this is where I seen him start to show a bit of, I don't know, I, I feel like, and I don't mean this in a, any disrespect, maybe a, a way out. Again, he's mentally thinking he's done, physically and mentally thinking he's done. Uh, I seen a little bit of a change where he's a bit more delirious now and you know the doctors like sees it talks to the um to the ref the ref uh, obviously herb dean goes to him and they're, they're asking him a lot of questions and whether you know this is speculation but you know this is what i've seen whether he was answering questions wrong or you know he just wasn't in the right headspace to answer them i think maybe the doctors and that maybe knew that maybe he was looking for a way out whether he was tired and all that which if that's the case that means the fight's over you shouldn't give him time to to get his energy back and whatnot. So he's in this place where they're, they're giving him an out again, mentally. They're, you know, he's like, all right, I'm, I'm, I think it's over. I'm, I'm sort of asking. Yeah, I'm sort, maybe maybe that's what he was doing, asking for, for them to be like, look, we're done, right? So uh, thinking they're in front of him, they're doing this thing. He knows he's entering the questions wrong and they, they must call it. They don't call it. So again, you've got to think of the headspace. So I've told myself, because that's what I've seen, even if they let him fight, he's done. Mentally, he's broken, he's done. There's no way he's coming back from that. You know, he's already looking for a way out. I'm gonna end it here. Comes out, finds out that they're not giving him this out. They're not giving him this, you know, this this relief of the fight being over, you know, accepting defeat. You know, he accepted, they didn't give him it. He's there and 
they get told he's gone and then I see him like all right I have to do this then so you've got to think of that now now again I, I guess you, it might look like I'm trying to throw shade while saying he was looking for a weight which I don't the fight was wasn't going his way and he was you know he had me in some of his go-to moves and still couldn't get the job done right now he's thinking what can I do to beat this guy so you can't I, I don't mean this in a bad way but where I'm gonna get him, give him credit he thought it was over mentally physically broken and then somehow flips a switch again to say all right they're not giving me this out I'm gonna just do my best and goes out there and, and, and does it fourth round goes probably worse for him I uh, probably land even bigger shots bigger the ground and pounds probably worse you know what I mean I mean some of these shots that I was landing was you know it's hard to watch um, again the looking for a way out the ref sort of does the same thing they're asking him questions he's like in Spanish um, he is saying I can't see whether he could or whether that was his ask for you know I'm done I can't see you know if that's ask for just end it I'm done I don't know that's what I'm, I'm sensing they don't give it to him comes out fifth round again mentally physically broken best round you know do I think uh, he won that no I think statistically shows that I won that round anyway but was it his best round yes did he come back firing did he pick it up from from the dark place he was at I think so so you know what I mean it was a, a pretty incredible to see and I thought he was done going into that fifth round I'm like all right I'm gonna put it on him and I seen that he was sharp ready to go still fighting what was in front of him you know he could still see and his reaction was still there and I had to be like all right I still got to be calculated. I can't just be careless. So, uh, you know, that's my breakdown of, of, of that fight. Mainly wanted to get into that third round where a lot of people knew where, you know, what happened, the controversy around it. And sort of just the mentality, what was I thinking in my mo moments, the hearing moments, and what I felt like, or what I seen or take a feeling in that moment. And uh, he was in a dark, dark place. And I was too. I thought he was done and the ref was going to stop it. And being told, I talked about this on, uh, on the podcast with Teddy Atlas. And we broke down and we got into depth with this. Uh, but, you know, I just thought I'd go into a little bit more depth with you guys and just sort of explain uh, that situation where, again, it's a site that a lot of people aren't going to see. You know, you're going to have people talking about have their opinions, but that's what I've seen. And I was uh, in amongst it, a wild uh, third round, and uh, obviously we shared something. There was a bit of bad blood before, and, you know, the respect's there when you share a moment like that, share a bit of history together. Uh, respect, you know, you're going to give respect where respect's due, and uh, he earned my respect. Again, I thought he was done, and he somehow, uh, you know, he, he somehow dug deep and, and, and gave me that little bit more of a harder fight, fight in that fifth round. So, credit all Tager, and hope he's enjoyed uh, my little uh, my little rant, my little chat. I might do more of these. Uh, it was good fun. Uh, whenever I'm uh, driving around, I'm going to get a camera going. I'm just going to talk shit for you guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers.